moving on to descending. So, you know, this bicycles. Okay. Hey everybody, I'm Mike Kazmer. Welcome to the Pink Bike Enduro and Freeride Field Test. We're taking a look at bikes with 160 millimeters and more of rear travel, bikes that are designed to excel in descents and still let you pedal them back up to the top. We're gonna to be taking a look at the brand new Santa Cruz Nomad. This is version 5.0. It's been a mainstay in Santa Cruz's lineup ever since 2005 when it was first introduced. And the current version still has 27.5 inch wheels and 170 millimeters of travel front and rear. I think refinement's the name of the game here. It's not a radical revision, more of an update to keep this bike up to speed and you know maintain its all mountain prowess. This bike still uses Santa Cruz's VPP suspension layout. No surprise there. That's the dual counter rotating link design that they've been using for years and years. Uh, but this one has received a longer stroke shock compared to the previous version and a kind of tweak to the leverage curve. They just made it a little straighter so it just stays nice and consistent throughout all 170 millimeters of travel. As far as the frame itself, it looks similar to the previous version, but there are some changes. You know, that head tube shape, a little different there. It's also received a strut on the drive side. So this brace here wasn't present on the previous version. Now the overall look of this frame kind of matches what we've seen on the 5010, the high tower, the mega tower, just a really similar aesthetic throughout the Santa Cruz lineup. It's a good looking frame, if I gotta say so myself. I mean, this color in the sunshine, really nice there. Speaking of nice things, internal cable routing, very well done by Santa Cruz. Little details are just always well taken care of on their bikes. Chain slap protector works great. They've got Zerk inserts on the lower link so you can squeeze some new grease into those bearings. And if for some reason those bearings got toasted, they have a lifetime bearing replacement program and the frame itself has a lifetime warranty. So just a lot of small details that were all taken care of on this bike. There's no aluminum version in the lineup, but there are two different versions of the carbon frame. There's the C and the CC. This is the C, so that means it's a little bit heavier, but also a little bit less expensive than that highest end CC version. They say the frame stiffness is the same. It's just the layup um, and the material they're using just makes this one a little bit heavier, but again, saves a little bit of money. So this bike did go down that longer and slacker route that you keep hearing us talk about with pretty much every new bike, but they didn't go crazy with it. So this latest version, you've got a 63.7 degree head tube angle in the slack setting. If you wanted to increase that by 0.3 degrees, something that's probably not that noticeable, but you could bump it up to 64 degrees. The reach in the lower of the two settings is 472 millimeters for size large. And if you go to the steeper setting, it's 475 millimeters. Chain stay length on the large is 436 millimeters, but that changes depending on the size. So it's something new from Santa Cruz to kind of doing progressive chain stay sizing. So it gets five millimeters longer as you go up through the range. That C2 angle is at 77.5 degrees significantly steeper than the previous version, and it's actually 77.9 degrees in the steeper of the two geometry positions. So overall, kind of long and slack, but not crazy long, not crazy slack. Prices for the Nomad range from $4,400 all the way up to $8,700. This one sitting beside me. This is $7,399 US dollars. This is the XT Reserve package. So basically what you're getting, you got full Shimano XT 12-speed drivetrain, Shimano XT four piston brakes, Santa Cruz's reserve carbon wheels. That's that reserve and the model name comes from. As far as suspension goes, it's got a little mixed package here. Up front, it's the Fox 38. Yeah, sorry, almost said 36, but no, it's a 38. Fox 38 Performance Elite, and it still has that grip two damper. Basically, the difference between this and the fanciest one is the color of the stanchions. You don't get that fancy Kashima, but I kind of prefer the black. The rear suspension is taken care of by the RockShox Super Deluxe Select Plus cockpit. You got Santa Cruz carbon bars, got a Berg Tech stem, Santa Cruz lock-on grips, WTB Silverado saddle. Overall, nice parts get here, and it should be considering the price. The setup was nice and easy on this bike. That's kind of a theme with all the bikes we had in this year for this category. Uh, companies are getting really good at providing detailed setup guides. It makes it super simple to just inflate everything to the right air pressure, turn a few dials, and get it on the trail. Set that rear shock at 30% sag. It didn't take long before I felt right at home on this bike. We would have swapped out the tires for our Maxxis control tires, but this bike came with the same exact ones we were using, which is kind of a good sign. It's got XO Plus casing, Asagai up front, and DHR2 in the rear. And if you did go with a coil version of this bike, you, that's one option, they make the coil version. That one comes with double down tires, so a little thicker casing for the riders that might be wanting to have us be an even more aggressive machine.
Not all 170 millimeter travel bikes are created equal, especially on the climbs. With the Nomad, this latest version is an excellent climber, and not just for the 170 millimeter travel bike. Barely any uh, suspension bob, that new steeper seat tube angle gets you in a good riding position. And even though things got slacker and a little longer, I'd say it's a better climber than the previous generation. Just feels easier to handle, just kind of finds like it has a natural way of finding the best line through tricky technical sections of the trail. You know, someone that likes technical climbs but wants more travel, this could be a good option. I'd say as far as overall efficiency goes, this bike feels neck and neck with that propane spin drift that we had in, as far as not needing to reach for that climb switch and just very well supported when you're standing up and cranking on the pedal. So we'll see how the pseudo-scientific efficiency test turns out, but I put my money on this one being pretty high up in the results there. My initial shakedown ride on the Nomad took place on a day that was just after it had rained a whole bunch. So tons of rain had come down, trails are about as slippery as it gets. And that's when I was really impressed with how much traction is available. That tune on the shock, they did a really good job of making it just gets out of the way of bumps quickly without any harsh bottom outs, just has nice and smooth feel. In the previous VPP suspension designs, sometimes it could feel a little bit harsh and not didn't give you that kind of bottomless plush feel, but this bike has that bottomless plush feel that you put your heels down, plow through all sorts of roots and rocks without feeling like your feet are gonna get bounced off. So did a really good job there. And the bike itself doesn't feel overwhelmingly long or overwhelmingly slack. You know, there are a few bikes we've got in for this round of testing that are just basically brutes on the trail. I'm looking at you, Norco Shore. That thing's a handful. This one, not as much of a handful. You know, you can kind of whip it around when hit some jumps, not a problem. Um, if you're on mellower terrain, it'll pump the train nice and easily. It just doesn't feel like it's taking you for a ride. Easy bike to control. It's got a, a little touch of that jibbiness that you'd find with the shorter travel 5010. So if you are somebody that likes to you know, toss a manual here and there, kind of get sideways, it allows you to do that, but then you can still plow. So kind of a nice, nice blend of characteristics. And compared to say the Mega Tower, the 29 inch version of the Nomad, basically a little less rear travel, but still. The Mega Tower, I never quite got along with the rear shock tune. This one, if I could have the Mega Tower or this rear shock tune, I'd be super happy. So we'll see what happens in the future. But either way, back to the Nomad. They've done a really good job of keeping it in that kind of do it all, fun, long travel bike. For the time testing, I actually had my slowest time on the Nomad. It was a 2.48, somewhere around maybe seven seconds off my fastest time. I mean, that could have been me just forgetting I was on a smaller wheeled bike and pushing too hard in the corners and sliding out a little bit. I don't think it's a slow bike. So, I mean, I don't really hold those time testing numbers just as the be all end all. You can go fast on this bike, but if you're looking for a race bike, bigger wheels, something a little bit longer could potentially be the ticket. But for just for fun, there's no shortage of fun here. And that can't really be quantified by numbers on a stopwatch. Time to go over the component highs and lows. We'll start off by saying that Santa Cruz have always been really good at picking just appropriate components for the bike. On this one, there's really not too much to complain about. You do have to complain about one thing though, it's gonna be those rattly Shimano XT brake pads. Complain about the XTR pads on the Rocky Mountain Altitude. I'm gonna complain about these ones here. It's the fins, they knock against the caliper body. You can quiet it down with some mastic tape or some Velcro or something like that, but you know, a bike like this with pretty minimal cable rattle, you do just start noticing the little things and you can hear that brake pad knock, 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 knock on a rough section of trail. So that annoys me, but it is fixable. So not the end of the world. Going on to highlights, I'd say that that kind of a mismatched suspension. You know, some people, they say, oh, there's Fox in the front, Rock Shocks in the back. I wouldn't worry about that at all. They play very well together. It doesn't feel like one is radically different than the other. So just nice, even feel, just very well matched. A Shimano XT drivetrain, that's a standout kind of workhorse in, in their lineup. Wide range for getting you up any kind of steep hill. And it's just quick, crisp shifting. You can shift on a load without any problems. Those reserve wheels, those have held up well so far as well. We can talk about the dropper post. It's a RockShox Reverb. That also works well. I'd still probably like to see an even longer travel option on this bike, just because I feel like bikes that are at least a size large should have 200 millimeter posts when possible. But there is enough room that if you wanted to switch that out, something you could definitely do. With the pros of the Nomad, well, first off, it's just such a well-sorted frame. All the little details are taken care of, just really well thought out frame package. Bike as a whole, just has a nice feel of an all-rounder. You know, it doesn't require that you stay super focused and attentive. You can be a little bit lazy, which I kind of like sometimes. So really easy bike to ride, plenty of travel to get you out of trouble, and it also pedals well. You know, that's basically the definition of an all-mountain bike. So I know that term isn't quite in favor, but I'm gonna call this a really good all-mountain bike.
as far as cons go, I did mention those Rattly XT pads. I wish they didn't rattle. The other con is there's no aluminum version of this. The cheapest version isn't that cheap. So it'd be cool if they did roll out the aluminum version in the future. They did with the last, for, last Nomad. So we'll see if they do it with this one. But for now, it's still pretty pricey to get into a carbon Nomad. Who's a new Nomad for? Well, if you like the previous version, you're gonna probably love the new version as well. It hasn't lost any of that classic Nomad flavor, kind of your do-it-all bike, somebody that wants to get rowdy, but still do a decent amount of pedaling, lots of travel without becoming unmanageable. So they've kind of done a nice few little tweaks and refinements, but it still maintains that classic Nomad character. There you go, that's the new 2021 Santa Cruz Nomad. Stay tuned for more field test videos, including our Huck to Flat, as well as a round table comparison where we talk about the pros and cons of all the bikes that we had on hand for testing. Thanks for watching.